Welcome to Cigar Time, your ever so friendly show all about premium cigars. Still ever so yeah. friendly. Yeah, we're kind still of. friendly. Time, how many years is it? Uh, eight or nine. I've lost track. And we're still yeah, friendly. Eight. It's amazing. I think it's eight, yeah. Not only are we friendly, we are the only legitimate, real television show about premium cigars. Others have podcasts and Facebook stuff. And we're the only show that you can watch over the air, you can get it on cable, you can get it on satellite in the Philadelphia metropolitan area, which covers about three million homes. So we're very proud of that, because we're getting close to our 10th year. And uh, wow. And Scott isn't here. And Scott's not here. That's yeah. worth celebrating all by oh, himself. There he is. There he is. In, he's in Vegas today. <laughs> he's in Vegas. Poor, poor guy in Vegas. Yeah. Gambling is in a hurry. It's a way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, oh, today's cigar. Oh, yeah is the Trinidad, and we have it in three sizes, uh, Bellicoso, Toro, and Magnum. Uh, this is a special buy. A, uh, this, these cars were made for a very large uh, online customer, and when that contract expired, they came to us with the remaining couple thousand boxes, and uh, as we have said in the past, and we can get a good deal to bring to you, uh, we bought them all. And uh, these cigars were formerly about 10 to 13 dollars, uh, but we're not going to sell them for that. We're not even going to sell them for anywhere near <laughs> close to that. We're not, e not even half of that. Not even. This is where you put in the U's and O's. Ooh. Ah. ah. That's more like it. <laughs> we take so, direction you know, well. the, <laughs> the Trinidad brand, I want to say relatively new, but I guess I'm aging myself. The, the Trinidad well, the original, brand originated yeah, in Cuba. Yeah. And it was originally a Lancero, Lancero only, and it was a specialty cigar that Castro liked to give to other people. Yes, he did. Well, he and never gave me a box. No. Did he give you a box? No. And did anybody get a box? No. Nope. Nope. They call him El Comandante. I got half. And a box. they got what, he, and he got what he deserved for not giving. Yes, that's true. He died. <laughs> Don't mess with us. So there have <laughs> yeah. been several non-Cuban iterations of the Trinidad, but as far as I know, this is the original one. Yes. And it's been kept, you know, aged longer, which is why it's the Trinidad Reserve. Uh, you might notice, if you look at the cigar, it's got a beautiful silky wrapper. That is an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Mm -hmm. The binder is Honduran. No, I'm sorry, the binder is Nicaraguan. Nicaraguan. Yeah. The filler is Honduran and Nicaragua. Right. Correct. And uh, if I don't like this soon, I'm going to hurt somebody. <laughs> so to find my bar, you're right. You're right. Thank you, sure. You're sure. welcome. Here's your bill of parole blue if we're using. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, because of my many, many trips to Cuba over the years, uh, especially back in the 90s, the Trinidads had just gone into commercial production. Paul said it was strictly a presentation cigar from El Comandante to uh, the various heads of state that visited Cuba, mostly communist heads of state. Uh, and, and when the cigars originally came out in Cuba, they were very hard to come by and very expensive by even Cuban standards. So when the Consolidated Cigar Company started producing cigars that evolved into out of this, it was a very sought-after cigar, and still is a limited production cigar. Uh, some of their newest iterations, like the, uh, the Spiritu. Spiritu. I mean, it's a very good. It's very good. And fabulous. so is the new one, the uh, Spiritu number two. Two, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very good. I mean, this is no slouch either. No. No, no, no. Not at all. It draws very well. I just got a very distinct cocoa flavor, yeah. which I usually don't get in this type of, in this cigar. I have a little pepper on me. Yeah. <clears throat> a little bit. Yeah, I get it on the retro. It's not for the faint of heart, though. The it's retro. Not, it's, yeah, yeah, the retro is not. not. Not real mild through the nose? Yeah. No, I would agree. So if you get a nosebleed, you shouldn't worry about it. Yeah, just 
Just don't let me around. Just slump forward, try to focus the blood somewhere else beside the cloth. Yeah. Well, black it won't. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Just get a little shiny. Yeah. It's very tasty. I haven't had one of these in a while. I haven't had one in a long, long time. Yeah. In fact, they probably weren't reserves. The last time I had them, they were just, it was just Trinidad. Trinidad. But when you got smoke of them, they made them all into reserves. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it, it, it's not a cigar you'll find everywhere. No. Even though it's a well-known name. I mean, Trinidad's one of the finest cigars around. But, but you won't find this at every tobacconist. Especially the reserve. You'll have a hard time finding it. You will have anywhere. a very difficult time finding this cigar. Although I'm sure that, you know, there's probably some kicking around here and there. Well, let's get everybody's first impression. Are you punk enough to give a first impression? Oops, you want to... I'm enjoying it so far. Okay. It's not as strong as I like, I like bold cigars. Yeah, you like them. Yeah, it's just my personal preference, but yeah. I'm enjoying it. It's a nice smoke. It is smooth. Yeah, very smooth. I also get a... A sweet tobacco taste out of it, like mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's almost like a chewing tobacco sweetness. Mm -hmm. Do you ever chew? No. Like I never chew tobacco. Thank God. Does it taste thing. like bark? It does. <laughs> <laughs> I equate I equate chewing tobacco right up there with a proctology exam. No, stop. <laughs> yeah, that's about stop. right. I played baseball, so I yeah, chewed chew. tobacco. Yeah, you I, mean, I, you I never chewed chew tobacco. Big lead, chew. No, it was beech nut. Bubble nut. Bubble it was beech nut in those days. The original beech nut. It still was on a beech and yeah, it had big, a lot of nuts big in it. Big leech chew is, uh, is exactly. bubble gum. gum. Bubble gum. Yeah. That's all shredded, it's shredded up. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wide. Wide. Yeah. I actually, what I used to do is I used to <clears throat> take the gum and chew a uh, bunch of that and then take the tobacco and chew it into the roll gum. it into it and chew it, yeah. Really sick. Tobacco. Bum. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> no one even <laughs> I see you recovered from your near-death experience yesterday. Which was what? You were sick as a dog. I was, yeah, I was not doing well yesterday. You had dysentery or something. I don't know what it was. Intestine, yeah. some kind of intestinal problems. Yeah. That's crappy. I think it was a, it was some kind of infection because I, I drank uh, uh, cranberry juice and I feel fine now. Oh. Was it shocking? Real, real cranberry juice? juice? No, so I can't stuff find with it. Ninety percent sugar. It's. Cranberry cocktail. Oh yeah, but, sure. the, but it, it still works. But, but real, I can't real cranberry, cranberry juice, just, your head caves in because you you pucker so much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, well you pucker on the other one too, but it, it's hard. Real cranberry juice is hard. You have to mix that with vodka. I can you do that. That would work. Sure. <coughs> or or Jack, Jack in your that's, case. That's your problem. Yeah. Yeah. You tried to cure it with simple things. You should have gone with liquor. Yeah. Then but you, no, you would have cared. I feel fine today. Yeah, you sound fine. Yeah. yeah you, you don't look so hot. Thank you. <laughs> Did he before? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he grew about six inches. Yeah. Or well, we shrunk. It's a choice of chairs thing. <laughs> no, I, I sit up when I sit down. He's not a sloucher. Yeah. Well, Paul, what the, what tales of yours can you regale us about today as far as planting, pruning, seedlings? You know, any agrarian comments, uh, thoughts, promises, and illusions? Well, I'm just thinking about Ecuador and Havana, since that's the wrap mm -hmm. this. You have a lot of experience in Ecuador. Well, yeah, and Ecuador Havana is actually different than any of the other Habano named breeds. And the reason for that is, unlike anywhere else, when they introduced Habano 2000 outside of Cuba. All of the countries that were playing with it were having horrible failures. Ecuador was the first country to ferment it long enough and hot enough for it to be truly viable. But by then, the name Habano 2000 was sullied. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. So they just changed it to Habano. Yeah. So it's Ecuador Habano is actually. Havana 2000, super fermented. And if I recall correctly, I think we may have covered this on a previous show, the reason they, they I don't know, bred it. Yeah, bred it, that was invented, was to, to overcome 
some of the mold problems with blue mold, things like that. It was in, a very in, hardy leaf. In Cuba, yeah. that's why they did it. And then uh, just a few people, I believe um, Christian Aroa's father, right, Honduras, yeah. Nestor Placencia, mm -hmm. and the Arai family mm -hmm. in Ecuador, Ecuador yeah. were the ones that first got a hold, and I think it was actually uh, Nestor who snuck the seeds out of Cuba. Possible. And uh, once they got the seeds out, those three countries started playing. Nicaragua, where they Honduras, them? and... Where they hide the seeds? I shudder to think. Uh, yeah. It might be like that coffee. Could be where that sweet <laughs> taste comes from. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Well, that, that nuttiness. That nutty, yeah. <laughs> Does that Ecuador grow coffee, don't they? Yes. Yeah, I they, they grow a lot, but they're not known as <coughs> yeah. a coffee country. Yeah, not like Venezuela. Either. Because it's always in a blend. About 80% of the coffee they grow in Ecuador goes to Maxwell House. Now, in countries where it's they grow... the last drop. Uh, yeah. And a one pound can has 11.2 ounces in it. Yeah. You used yeah, to have one pound. pound. Yeah, that's funny. The, they still call give me a pound of coffee, it's only 11.2. <laughs> now, started asking a question. Yeah, the, the question I have is in countries where they grow both tobacco and coffee, when they turn over the fields, do they ever turn over one to make the other, or is it strictly... I, I have not seen that, especially in Ecuador, because the coffee growing areas different. are very different. Yeah, different. The only other major crop in the tobacco growing area is bananas, which is the biggest export yeah, in Ecuador. Yeah, that's a big export. And uh, somehow plowing under bananas to plant tobacco just doesn't, doesn't seem work. Doesn't work, <laughs> We were talking about the uh, last week about uh, a manufacturer or grower who does that, who turns the coffee, turns or the coffee, co or the cocoa. I mean, it was cocoa back into the into the soil and then plants the tobacco seeds. Was that on the Saturday show? I don't remember because I, I don't know anybody who does it with no. cocoa. Remember? No, I don't. Remember. I I know on our farm <clears throat> what we did because we didn't like to use commercial uh, uh, fertilizers at all and there's only so much cow manure you can get your hands on down there. Um, we but what we did some. is we would plant soybeans and not harvest them. We'd plow the whole crop into the ground, right. wait a year, and then plant tobacco on top of that. Oh, okay. Because uh, like tobacco, soybeans are a very hungry plant. Mm -hmm. So Soak the, the yeah. finished product, if you plow it back in, fertilizes the soil, especially with nitrogen. Nice. Really well. How many plantings did you normally get out of a... Out in of Ecuador, field? they can do three a year, but really? we never did that. When Cuba tried to do that years ago, they weren't yeah. very successful. The, the reason they're able to do three a year is because they're right on the equator, yeah. so they have a longer growing yeah. season. Right. But we always stuck to two. Okay. It brings up a question I've always been curious about. You know, those of us who love premium cigars, we always think of, you know, Nicaragua, Honduras and the Dominican Republic as, as the prime tobacco. But there are many countries all around those three countries. Why don't they grow tobacco? It's a good cash crop. Actually, do. almost well, all of minor. those countries grow some. Some, yeah. And almost all of it, except in Costa Rica, almost all of it is actually grown by Nesta Placencia. Mm -hmm. Even in uh, Colombia? He's got farms everywhere. Well, we used to remember we, we used yeah. to get Colombian wrapper. Right for years the ago. Not, yeah. not filler for the Oh, filler, yeah, that was filler, right? But that was a long time ago. You know, indirectly, if you were buying filler from Colombia, there's a partial chance that it was actually Ecuadorian tobacco, because in Ecuador, since they only export wrappers, the whole rest of the crop were what most of the companies would do is ship it to Colombia where they would grind it up for cigarettes. Oh, okay. But since they bought them as whole leaves, if they decided to use some of it and sell it as cigar tobacco, they would make that much more money because they were paying for cigarettes. Yeah. Which another question. These countries that, that actually make cigarettes and, and use all kinds of different tobacco. 
Are they mostly all tobacco cigarettes, or are they like American cigarettes, which are slurry of various whatever? They're more like American cigarettes, uh, and most of the brands are American brands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hmm. yeah well, I'm curious. Come? Why more countries don't don't use tobacco as a cash crop, or or uh, it's, in it's a major way? As opposed I'll, well, to a minor I'll tell you way. why. Compared to almost any other crop, the cycle for earning money in tobacco is much longer than other crops, because typically you oh, have to. Okay. You have to plant it, you have to grow it, you have to harvest it, you have to age it, you have to ferment it, then you sell it, so what and you're then saying? you wait a year to get yeah. paid. Well, I was just going to say, it's a long time between seedling and dollars. And that, yes, a very yeah. long time. Okay, well that, that, you can't that, wait that long when you do bananas. <laughs> right, and you don't have to wait that long right, when exactly. you do bananas. The richest man in Ecuador, uh, I forgot his first name, his last name is Noboa. He's known as the banana king. He owns like... 60 or 70 percent of the banana plantations. In wow. Did he write that song, the banana boat song, with Harry Belafonte? No, I, I don't think so. What song? Who wrote that song? I you know. I don't know what country it's supposed to be set in. Oh, I know it starts with Deo. Yes, that much I know. <laughs> we could do a rousing chorus. No, no, not me. No. I'd like to hear both. You know what we say. <laughs> I Come on, words. I heard you were a great crooner. I actually forget words and add my own, and you don't want to hear that. Yeah, no. Some of those words wouldn't be able to be put. I know, you'd have to censor it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, John could use that bleep button big time. <laughs> and the more Jack he consumes, the more he can bleep. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, the songs get better, though. I <laughs> At least to you. <laughs> that's, that's when I can sing. Yeah. That's when the Irish in me comes out. You know, if the price we're going to be selling these, I may buy some myself. Yeah, really, I'm thinking the same thing. You already own them. Oh, that's true. Yeah, good point. <laughs> you might smoke some yourself. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I knew there was something about it. We can't say how much they are, can we? No. No, the company will go, will go through the roof. Uh, it would make their hair stand on end, and you guys out there, when yeah. you see the price on this, it'll make your hair stand on end. They are too. inexpensive. You may not notice my hair is already standing on end, but it's so... It's so light and, and fine, you can't see it exactly. Like Paul, Paul's is under his hat. Yeah. My, yes. My hair is standing straight up. That's what I should do. I should wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> you used to. Yeah, but the Phillies, Phillies didn't hat. win anything. Yeah, and, uh, one year the Eagles did real well. Yeah, i got to go back to the hats. I Maybe bring, you can bring the flock. Yeah, bring the, bring the team's flock. The boy, you sure need it. Yeah. <laughs> Although the Sixers, the Sixers are doing pretty good. And the Phillies? I still in the race. Holy yes, moly. It's what, the beginning of June and they're still in there. Yeah. Unbelievable. But the Flyers, mm, mm, mm. Mm. That's a shame. We had high hopes for them. Yeah, we all do. We all do. And the football's getting ready to start. I'm ready for that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah but I watched my first football game. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's a yeah. turncoat. He's yeah, not an Eagles game. fan. Yes, I am. Yeah. You are? I mean, I'm not it a serious it. knowing the stats it's kind of Eagles fan. Oh, but I, thought like, I thought you were no. more like New York. No. Oh. Oh. Not when it comes to football. Welcome to the fold. He's, a, he's an Eagles, Eagles fan. And, and Did a, you know that? No. I didn't know that. There's a real reason for it. When I tried to sell cigars at Giants games, I got arrested. <laughs> when I tried to sell cigars at Eagles games, yeah. I sold a boatload of cigars. <laughs> so, um, a Vikings fan because you used to live up there. No, I was no, I didn't live in Vikings country. I lived in Green Bay country. Oh, Green, Green Bay. Yeah. Same. And no, I was never a fan. Too damn cold in the yes. stadium. Well, you know what? There. There, there, there's a family in the cigar business that are diehard Green Bay fans. I mean. Die hard. Rocky and the family are die hard eat Green Bay. Really? Because when they came over, I think uh, Rocky told me the story many, many years ago. I, I hope I remember it correctly. Apparently, the family located in Green Bay. Why, anyway, why From India Green to Green Bay? Boy, yeah. that's a switch. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess they just one of the. I could be wrong. But I being see, hot. I, I, yeah, yeah, I know. I see. Well, not all of India is hot. Don't forget the Himalayas. Yeah, I mean, well, they, they have nobody well, lives there. But I don't, isn't I don't there, think isn't there a big Indian area. community in that, that area of the country? There's a big Indian community in that country? Less so in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, no, 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 no. no, no. In, no I think in, more in Michigan, in less in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they, 
That's probably why they moved that, there. But they they're in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. that's why they moved there. Huh. So he's still a Green Bay fan? Yeah, oh yeah. If you look at his Facebook during football season, I mean, they go to games and everything. They have the blankets and all the schmear. I mean, no, the blankets don't matter. You know, every when I lived up there, the cheesehead. Every year, at least one drunken idiot would literally freeze to death in the stands. Well, it's every year, at least one guy. Wow. There was about four years ago, they had a uh, a sale of stock for the team. The, the team's owned by the, by the, the Sands. Sands. Yeah, yeah, it's owned by the town. Yeah. I bought my wife one share. Oh, cool. She's, she's a Green Bay fan. Eagles first, Green Bay second. She's a fan, so I bought her one share. So she owes a part of the team. Well, you get a preseason ticket with that one share? Nah. <laughs> I don't think so. Ten yeah. seconds. No, right it's in. probably the other way around. Probably. You buy a season ticket, you, you get, get a share. share like <laughs> well, probably did, like the... Did uh, somebody do that with uh, some craft beer with pizza ale? Mm. Not, not mm. the wicked... Nice tea, pizza ale, like 20, 25 years ago. You got a stock certificate if you bought a 12 pack. Really? But it yeah, didn't go. It shares. didn't go anywhere, and the stock was worthless. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got 12. Yeah, you got a 12 pack. You, you got a 12 pack. Congrats, you're worthless. Yeah, it wasn't completely worthless. How long can you? Not a word. Somehow, fun from cigars to booze. How long can you? Keep a bottle, a bottle, not a can, a bottle of beer in the refrigerator before just forget about it. Yeah, don't it's like never they last don't last, last, last that long in my refrigerator. I don't know. know. No, no, no. Yeah, but beer no, doesn't stay from what I, long enough from what I understand, <laughs> as long as it's closed, and yeah, the carbonation remains sealed. with the beer, it should be fine. Oh, the only way to ruin a sealed bottle of beer is to Sunlight. refrigerate it. Let it get warm oh, no, yeah. and refrigerate it again, yeah. and then it gets all skunky and terrible. Because I brought uh, uh, that was a big thing about hiding it. They would refrigerate, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they would ship it over, and, and it, it would go warm, warm in the sh shipping over process. And then they get it here, yeah. and it would be lousy beer. I brought back a bottle of Pilsner Yorkwell from the Czech Republic many, many, many years ago. It's still sitting in my refrigerator. <laughs> if it doesn't have fur inside the bottle, no, you're, you're in good shape. Yeah. Is the fish still alive? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the nice pilsner. I mean, I'm not a, much of a beer aficionado by any stretch, but it, it was a nice. Uh, oh, they have board on dates and stuff like that. Yeah, the board on dates is a trick of the government. Well, that's, that's marketing. That's marketing that's to sell you the faster. I really enjoy it. So do you? We still let you play the game, right? You know what I'm finding is that that <laughs> bit of pepperiness that it started gone. out with yeah, is gone, gone yeah. and now yeah, it's yeah, much no. creamier and a little sweeter. I find that too, but I'd rather have a little bit of pepperiness. I enjoyed it when it was there. Yeah, with the, with the first first little bit of it was very tasty. Now it's mellowing out too much for me. It's all a good cigar though. Now, even in Cuba, the Trinidad, as I said before, the Trinidad. Are, are an expensive cigar in Cuba. Yes. And they're not exactly giveaway in this country, except by virtue of what we're doing here. Yeah. It is, very it is very sweet. Not a lot. You're the go-to guy. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, Oops. I believe the Cuban Trinidads are still Lancero-based sizes. There are a couple of sizes, yeah, they but size, they're, yeah. they're shorter, they're longer, right, but they're right. all right. long and thin. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lancero's the number one seller, I do believe. But that's what it was known for originally. Oh, my God. It was very interesting. Very. I've only ever had one Cuban uh, Trinidad. Oh, no, I suppose a lot of them. They're, 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 not, they're not high intensity. No. I can smoke one of them. It's a giveaway for less than serious cigar smokers, but you want it to be an impressive gift. That's what that's what it was invented for. They have beautiful wrappers. I yes. remember that. Beautiful wrappers. Well, this is a nice wrapper, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's nice and silky. Look at that. It's got a nice sheen to it. How many other cigars have Ecuadorian Obama on them? A lot. Now, yeah, but not you, ten years ago. No, no, ten years ago it was all Connecticut and uh, Sumatra mm -hmm. coming out of Ecuador. 
and 15 years ago there was a tiny bit of uh, Ecuadorian uh, Cameroon and a little bit of Ecuadorian Corolla. But those were specialty products. Our cameraman was having a little connection there. I, I couldn't tell what it was. I couldn't see the clock. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just go on and on and on and on. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll, you know, sort of start wrapping things up, Moose. Give us your final comments and put a number on it, and, yeah, no right. Well, it smokes real well. It's got good construction. As everybody said, the wrapper's nice and silky. I like the way it started out with the pepperiness, and then it mellowed out a little bit. Like I said in the beginning, I like a stronger cigar. But uh, this is worth every penny. Uh -huh. very, very good. And worth every penny, even at the real price. Yes. yes. So we're not going to oh, sell it. Oh, I'm sold it for the real price. <laughs> By the way, just so you all know, that pretty looking box is a box of 10. Yes. yes. Just yeah. coming boxes. Yeah, you don't have to buy 20 or 25. You can just get 10 back at a really nice price. Yeah. So Rob? Number. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, my number? Yeah, yeah. No, we got your number. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I've been here long enough. Um, eight and a half. And that's because, like I said, I, I prefer a stronger smoke. Yeah, I like the stronger smoke. Eight point five. Okay. We're cool. right. I, like, I like the smoothness, smoothness of the cigar. I like the sweetness. Um, and I definitely like the uh, retro hail, the full bodiness of mm -hmm. the retro hail. I like that. Um, I'd have to give it an eight seven five. Okay. That's, that's where I was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> now, there is something in particular that I really like about this cigar, and that's that after it mellowed out, the retro hail stayed powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can puff on a mild, slightly sweet, slightly creamy cigar, mm -hmm. and when you feel like ramping it up, you just do a retro hail, and you're right back Absolutely. into spicy air. Yes. It's complex. And that, that really works, to yes. be able at will to switch between mellow and strong. Um, but I also give it an 875, which is a good rating. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Especially at the price we're going to be selling that. Uh, I like this cigar. I didn't like it when I first smoked it years ago, but I guess with a little more age on it, it, it it's gotten a little more mellow. Yeah. It's uh, rounder yeah, flavor yeah, than yeah, it used yeah, to be. Yeah. And, and, and the fact it has all the earmarks of a really decent cigar by, you know, mixing the taste as you smoke. Mm -hmm. Starting out one way, the meat in the middle is another way, and the ending is going to be another way. I mean... Uh, yeah, that's why I said complex. Yeah, I like this cigar. I'll give it an 885, just to be <laughs> contrary. <laughs> but I like it. And of course, I should actually give it a little higher because I like the price. Oh, stop. <laughs> uh, I, like I, was price. For that. I was waiting for that. Stop. Yeah, but you know something? A cute little 10 pack at a really great price. What right. could go bad? Nothing. All right, don't forget our Saturday night show at 8 o'clock, and we'll see you next week. Ciao for now, everybody. Bye bye.